Howdy guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today I'm going to show you guys or explain some stuff that we don't generally do anymore, but just for the sake of your um, information, I'll show it and explain it in detail as I can. Okay, first of all, we've got a lot of fires going on in California right now. We've got a lot of floods from hurricanes, a lot of stuff in the air, bad, toxic. I won't go there, but what they have here is, is mold. You can see the mold. And what I'm doing is I'm going to neutralize all this mold you see, uh, you see how it's bubbling up? That's neutralizing it because I don't want to inhale it. I'm going to put my mask on in a minute uh, because I can't talk with the mask. And I've done this many, many, many times. Too many times that I want to even go over. What we do or what anybody does, guys, is they'll come in here. They'll neutralize it like, like this. What, what products for neutralizing mold? You've got what I'm using, a fruit juice or fruit enzyme. You've got bleaches, you've got TSP, you've got borax, which is really, really good for neutralizing it. Then after we neutralize all this, we take the pressure washer. This pressure washer here, I have this handy dandy uh, tip, and man, it gives a lot of power right here. We're gonna pressure wash all this off, and then we're gonna take by hand, scrape off all the loose stuff, then pressure wash once more. Once we do that, then we're gonna apply a bonding agent, and what is this? This is all foundation. Here are the difference. Foundation. Now foundation, if you got a good foundation with say um, a French drain system, you don't have these kind of issues. They had no French drains at one time. That's been resolved. What's this? Uh, sheetrock. What happens when sheetrock gets wet? Like in the floods right now, the hurricanes in San Diego, Florida. When sheetrock gets wet, it resorts to its natural self, putty. So this becomes putty. Uh, what we're going to put here is not, not a sheetrock or a taping mud, pu uh, pure gypsum mud. We're going to use uh, a structolite because structolite was used here before. And structolite has lime in it. So the limestone is crushed with, and mixed with gypsum, but it can get wet. Uh, so we're going to put a structolite base and two veneer coats over it so that yeah, it gets wet, but when drier conditions occur, it dries it all out, so you're not inhaling it. And just for the record, guys, uh, we're just the messengers here. Um, this stuff here, if you were to say Google, uh, black mold or stachybatris, never mind that you can't spell them. Uh, Google will spell them for you. You read some of the uh, bad stuff about mold. That's enough to turn anybody off, so we're just... I'm explaining how and what we're doing in a quick, uh, quick fashion for your in entertainment or more importantly, your education uh, because we're not trying to put fear out there. That's why I haven't done any of these videos with how to correct this stuff. It creates a lot of fear. And by the way, guys, how do you get mold in your house? I have a 100-year-old home I live in. Every year when it starts to rain, the insides, I put the heat on inside. It's cold as heck outside. Causes condensation all over the glass. The glass gets wet, thus it drips down. And if you have sheetrock and it's not painted well, the, the condensation from all the single pane windows drips on it, drips on it, drips on it. If it drips on it long enough and starts to go through, you're going to get this. And most houses, showers get this, guys. That's so not... It's not something that's unnatural. This is normal, guys. It's like wood rots, steel rust. Well, when walls get wet, guess what? Mold. Mold toxins are horrible. Worse than the fires that are going on right now in the um, Napa area. And worse, well, similar to the floods that are going on because everything is getting wet. Now you've got to dry it out. We're here just to, today to clean all this stuff out, and then it's got to set for a week or two. With We've got some machines over here to dry this stuff out, and there are some areas. you got a bucket right behind you, Jay. There are some areas, too, guys, that we need to vacuum. We just have HEPA bags in here. We put in air fresheners. And if you're going to do this stuff, guys, use at least a P2. This is a, about the, the lightest mask you can use. This one's uh, okay. Show them your mask, Jay. Jay don't mess around. He's got a good mask. Now that mask is what you should have, guys, because this stuff is no joke. But at the same time, you get it in your shower. You get it on your walls, single pane windows. We'll do it every time. We've got some of this stuff in our house, and we you, you deal with it. You just every 
Every other week we come and we clean it and make sure that it do doesn't have mold growing because mold, guys, is not really good for you. Anyway, we're going to get started and we'll show you a little bit as we go. All right, guys, I'll show you something else because I know somebody's going to watch and say, oh, yeah, gee whiz, that's concrete. But what if you have sheetrock that's molding? I'll show you what we generally do. All right, guys, here's one piece that uh, had sheetrock. What we're going to do is we're just going to take that sheetrock out because it's gone. It is, when I say it's gone, you can't salvage it. It's, it's gypsum. It's gone. So we're going to wire this and put Structolite as a base coat and then put a finish coat over it. In here, I still have the luxury of pressure washing this way and taking it out. All right, guys, you see where we're going with this? How many of you guys want to watch another hour of me doing this and bore the crap out of you? Most of you are probably saying, too late. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this all the way. And as fast as I pull a piece off, I'll hit it with water because I don't want all that exposure of the dust and crap and all the black widows and crap that are under this. Anyway, when we get to the stage in here where we got this all clean, we'll show you again. All we're going to do, we're going to skim coat all this stuff with gypsums uh, with lime in it. So basically a Structolite plaster or say uh, a base coat of veneer that those can get wet by the way. They can get wet but when drier conditions occur they dry out. Now that sheetrock cannot get wet but yet it has. So anyway we're one step at a time and then we pick up all this stuff throw it in our special trash bags and dispose of it. So we're going to go ahead and finish this off. It's going to take me about an hour or two, and then we'll show you when we get to that next stage. Okay, guys, it's a week later. Everything has had a chance to dry out. I know because I came by yesterday to make certain. Here's what we end up with. Okay, that's the stuff we pulled off. Over here, you can see what we pulled off. The pressure washer with uh, 3,000 PSI, it, it really pulls it off. If you hold it on long enough, it'll gouge the wall, and we've got this out. After we get that out, then we apply a bonding agent. Uh, you can use Weldcrete, and the next best, or the same equal to it, is Quickcrete. It's sold at Lowe's or Home Depot. What we're going to do is skim coat this now. And as I do the skim coat, I'll explain that a little bit more. We'll show you what we got going on up here because we showed this in the first video. I don't know if Jay's camera can adjust to this. It's pretty dark and gloomy down here. Turn on a few lights. Uh, we've got the wine cellar. Okay. Now everything in here. Mr. Dominguez, how are you, my friend? Very good, very good. What we're doing here is we had some sheetrock. It was pretty damaged, so beat up. So now that they did the French drain, there's no more chance of water. But just to be on the safe side, we wired it. We don't want any problems in the future. We're going to skim and put the finish coat on this too. But we're going to just show you the garage because we've showed this enough times. Just goes to show you, if you do have badly damaged sheetrock, get rid of it, change it. Okay guys, we are at the skimming process. All right, I'm using an imperial veneer because it has sand in it, it's a base coat. How many veneers, plasters are there? About 20 different companies. So here's what I'll do, where it's very smooth, and you guys can do it like this. You can Start it and fill it right here. There's a lot of ways to do this, guys. You can do it like so. Boom, and feather it in. The bag says two coats. Now, do you have to do two coats? You don't, not unless it's thick. Like say right here, it's mighty thick. So what I'll do is I'll put on my, my scratch coat. And if I hit a clinker, not a big deal. Clinker is just a, a piece that's sticking out further. You've seen what it used to look like here. So, And the idea, again, is a two-coat system. Two-coat if, if, say, like here. And here's something I generally do when it's this thick. They say you can go up to a 32nd inch thick to a, a 16th. You can go a quarter inch, guys. In fact, I've gotten thicker than that, but what I'll do is sometimes skim these where the depth is about a quarter 
I'll skim them. Now, if you're going over sheetrock, there's no suction. Plus, if you're going over sheetrock, you'll put a bonding agent on it. You'll kill the suction so it won't dry. This is going over raw concrete. It's drying just as fast as I am applying. So, here's my second coat just to give it some depth. Take it here. And the finish is so easy. All it is is you can zero in. This is a sand finish. They use the base coat. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use the base coat. And what I was saying a second ago, as far as um, how thick do you got to go, well, that's, uh, that's up to the wall. Like, again, sheetrock, a thin coat, just almost paper thin, and then back it up. With this, you go just thick enough to cover any blemishes. So, I'm just going thick enough to cover any blemishes. I'm going to skip this wall right here and spare you the rest of, or some more details. But the idea is you feather in, see that feather in, and just get it right to the existing. But say, what if you are going over an existing wall, which really doesn't take much mud, like this guy here. It's kind of beat up. Mostly the paint came off, and we got some holidays here and there. But you want to put it on, just skin it. As far as using the tools, well, that's, that's another story. You just pull it off, and yeah, generally folks say, gee, your trial is kind of big. You're going to blow out your arm. Nonsense. This makes my arm stronger. So, and anybody doing this, choose your own weapon or trial. You see that? We're out of mud now. I have one last uh, scoop right here. But I want to show you a little bit more about this and explain a little bit more. See, again, here, very, very thin. Very thin. And over there, a quarter inch, big deal. Now, because this has sand in it, I'm going to be able to match these finishes. I do have diamond, which is also a veneer. That's straight gypsum. Diamond has lime in it, crushed lime. So it's better for surfaces that have moisture. And getting on again, I, I believe I explained the moisture thing. Showers get it, windows get it, walls get it. All you got to do is have proper ventilation. Many showers I've seen look like a peach. Uh, purple with mold and I just tell the folks hey, I get it too just use common sense spray it with Clorox or a solution get all that crap and go down the drain you don't want to inhale it anyway Jason's going to mix me some more mud and we'll show you a little bit more all right guys this this product Imperial Base it actually sets in about uh, half hour you contaminate the mix, you get about 10 minutes, and it's set. Going over concrete, we had about 5 minutes. So I've got this part, the first batch, it's already set. I don't know if the camera can distinguish. This one piece in here is really white, and this is darker. When it dries, it lightens up. So now, now I have the fun part of floating it in while it's somewhat dry. And that's okay, nothing we can't handle. What we try to do is we go in circles, especially when it gets hard like this. We go in circles because the circles, we can work it. We try to just pull it up. It doesn't work that well. And when I say use, I'm, I'm using a green sponge float. Now, what's the difference, you might say, of a green sponge float and any of the other floats? Because there are a lot of floats, guys. There are neoprene floats, plastic floats. Uh, all have specific reasons. Uh, all do different things. I'll tell you real quick, okay, plastic float, you don't want it, that's just a compress and use certain material. Neoprene or hard rubber float, you don't want it because this will just, it'll compact it. We don't want it compacted, we want to bring the aggregate or sand out. So we go with the green sponge float. Okay, so we skimmed it and now we're floating. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Float like... A butterfly, skim like a bee, that's why they call me, not Muhammad Ali or Bruce Lee, 
but I'm no poet. I'm a better plasterer, guys. Anyway, you see where we're going with this. We got 20 minutes basically with this. And if you folks say, well, gee whiz, I need longer, go to Struck the Light. Struck the Light gives you, it's basically the same stuff, but it dries between three to five hours. How fast would Struck the Light, which is basically the same stuff, dry on this? One hour, because this, the porousness will suck out the uh, moisture right in, in the coat. So that's just a little tip, guys. What we're going to do is we're going to finish what we started. And okay, we got a quarter inch here or more. We go upward. We go upward and flat, upward and flat. What happens if I go this way? I'll gouge my crack right here because it's not fully set. The idea is to work it, bring out some of the sand, match the finish, and on the joint, go flat. Otherwise, that joint will show when it dries. Anyhow, guys, we are getting ahead of ourselves, and the material is waits for no man, including us. So I'm going to get back on it. And when we're done with this entire garage here, we'll show you the finished product. Okay, guys, we're all set. I'm going to show you the finish and give you some advice. This stuff kind of beat me up because the wall sucked it up so fast. So I advise you guys, if you're going to do this, to use a Structa light. It gives you three to five hours. How strong is this? I'm using the edge of the trowel, which is like, well, it is a steel trowel. Look what's coming off. Nothing. So... When you're floating this and you wait too long, I was sweating big time thinking, wow, because I'm putting it over here and I'm over here rambling about how to do this, so I lost a few of the walls. If you get any clinkers, holidays, close your eyes and just scrape them right off. Uh, this is Imperial. Again, you folks use uh, Struck the Light if you're going to do it, but the finishes wasn't really what this video was about. Uh, what this video was really about was mold uh, we don't generally do a lot of mold videos and there's a good reason why there's a lot of rules and regulations I mean so many rules after we pressure washed all this my brother was behind me and I, I was using this using the water hose we had to uh, cone off this area here with uh, a little hay, hay stack so that all of that mold was put in buckets we took about 20 buckets home uh, so there's a lot to do with mold which is this little 10 minute video is not going to explain it so I figured I'd point that out because it's really about mold this video and uh, ventilation on uh, doesn't matter where it is that's what this video is really about not how to do this because we've showed this many times and by the way you can get this wet and when drier conditions occur which they will it'll dry right out she rock do not touch it with water or it will resort back to its natural state gypsum anyway guys we thank you for watching and as usual live long and Blaster. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.